Oh, good afternoon. It is Sunday afternoon. And I thought it's about time I got around to doing these Q&As. Uh, I asked about a month ago if anybody wanted to put any uh, questions in. Uh, and most are about me, which is absolutely fine. Uh, and then there's a couple uh, on reselling, I think. Um, some of them uh, have been asked more or less twice in, in sort of slightly different ways. So uh, thank you ever so much to Joan uh, and also Joan Morris. So a lot of Joan questions in this. Uh, Nikki Irving and uh, Debbie Pelosi uh, have all asked me uh, questions in there. So thank you very much. I think it's about 12. I was going to go and sit somewhere comfy and do it like sitting having a cup of tea we'll have we'll have one anyway but um bill's downstairs and i don't know he watches them and then i feel a bit daft if i'm doing them when he's around so i'm not bother do you like my mug uh my son bought me this when i got to about 300 subscribers <laughs> it's joke <laughs> right uh number one um these came in on two, so I've sort of combined them. Um, where were you born and brought up? Um, and have you always lived in the same area? Um, I was born in Sheffield and I was born at home. Uh, I was born in the family home where my mum lived until the day she died. And um, all the family have been in there at some point. Um, one of five uh they had i'm second to youngest so i've got a sister who is now uh 54 uh, i'm 60 actually nearly 61 uh very soon uh my brother is 60 so if i want to be 61 so he must be 62 now no 63 when was he born 62 yeah he was 62 in may um but gabrielle and everybody else thinks he's younger than me fair enough uh and then uh after my brother there was a bit of a gap um my mom had another boy and a girl lorraine's the eldest she is 72 and my other brother just uh just had his 70th so yeah, we're all going on a bit, really. Um, always lived in Sheffield. And um, I was 18 when I got married, nearly 19 in the September, and it's my birthday in November. So uh, I was almost 19. I was 16 when I got engaged. Um, so it, it moved me on to question two now, which is how did you meet Phil and how long have you been married? Well, I met him in about 73, so I was about 14. And he was uh, working as a shoe repairer and key cutter in a shop uh, owned by my cousin. And that shop was next door to a Fletcher's, which is a bread shop, uh, where my mum worked. And I went down from school, bearing in mind I was still at school, uh, I went down from school one day to see my mum and um, used to go after school because in that shop, uh, if it got late, if it was the only sold fresh stuff in this bread shop and uh, if it got really late, they'd sell stuff off. So we used to go down and get cheap buns. Anyway, I saw Phil through the window uh, of my cousin's shop and uh, I thought, oh, yeah. He's all right. And uh, anyway, walking back home with my friend, I said I'm going to marry him one day. And I did. Uh, I had to pester him a bit. Um, excuse me. He was just making a right row then. I had to stop. I don't know what he was doing. Um, yeah, so 42 years we've been married. Massive medals we've got. <laughs> Love him to bits. Now, what was number three? Hmm. Number three, 
If not where you live now, where would be your ideal place to retire? Country or a broad coast town? Um, my ideal place to retire would be this very house. Um, I can't imagine moving anywhere else. Uh, whether we end up having to move or move into some wardened place or... I don't know. But I'd like to be here and die at home like my mother did. Um, having said that, if the children moved, I would have to move. And uh, bearing in mind the whole of the family, bar one, as, and I'm talking offspring as well, uh, have all stayed in Sheffield. Uh, I can't see them moving very far, to be honest. Um, but if I could pick this house up and put, because it is about a 10 minute, 10 to 12 minute drive to my son and then a few minutes after that it's my daughter. If I could pick it up and move it, I would move it to smack bang in the middle of them both so that the grandkids, like when Gabs is old enough, she can just go, go and see grandma and just run down road. That that would be absolutely ideal. Or I can just that like, when I can't drive anymore, I could just walk round or something. Not like next door, because they'd think I was stalking or, you know. Uh, but yeah, I'd love it to be walking distance uh, for an old lady. Uh, number four. Have you done much travelling? Uh, back in the day when we were made of money or made of plastic, whichever way around it was, um, we did used to have quite a few holidays. I didn't start going abroad until I was 40, and that was after I had a full hysterectomy at 39, and I'd never had anaesthetic before, and I had this huge fear that I wasn't going to wake up, I don't know why. And um, anyway, I did, obviously, wake up. And while I was stuck at home for about 13 weeks, it was the full jobby, so you, you, I couldn't move about much. I didn't quite finish that question. I'll come back to it. Uh, change of mug. Uh, it's gone dark. Uh, I hope you couldn't hear anything. I had no idea what Phil were doing, but I could hear him doing something. I realised they were actually um, cartering front door because since they did drive, they've got mud splashed all over everything. I've got me uh, Carla merch. Bear with don't realise how much you say things, do you, until you watch yourself back. I say so all the time. Uh, where was I? Travelling. Yes. So, uh, I did distract me. I didn't even wake up. Uh, I really mind. And, yes. So, when I was off work for about 13 weeks, um, I was getting people to bring me holiday brochures. So, I'd kept strategically leaving them lying around. Now... We'd always been happy, caravan holidaying and stuff, uh, when kids were little. And then um, we never went abroad, A, because we couldn't afford it. And then when we could afford it, uh, Phil gets a bit claustrophobic. So he didn't fancy going on a plane. And I don't like boats. It scared the life out of me. Um, to the point where I always end up with a bad migraine when I'm on a boat. So not worth it. We did once row out into the middle of a pond when I was, I was 16 and we'd gone to visit his auntie. Um, and on that, <laughs> my dad even wrote to his auntie and made sure that we were going to have separate beds. Um, so, yeah, we went rowing out into the middle of this lake and uh, I had panic attacks because it was only like a little canoe thing. And I, I had like a panic attack and started screaming. Phil, Phil, this bloke, he shouted to this bloke at Edge that were looking after all boats and everything and, and he said, you've got to get her off. <laughs> anyway, he ended up wading out. <laughs> wading out to pull the boat in because Phil was just holding me still. <laughs> so he was mortified, Phil, because it was only about three foot deep, this water. <laughs> yeah, so don't know boats. Anyway, so... I ended up saying to Phil, right, I'm going on a plane and you can come or not, but if you don't come, I'm taking my mother. So he said, uh, I'll go. <laughs> anyway, we went. So I didn't want it to put him off ever going away ever again. And uh, we're not snobs in any way, shape or form. We are not snobs. However, 
probably might be a bit more than me. Uh, no, we're not snobs. And, um, but we do like things nice. <laughs> so, and particularly clean. So I thought, well, I'll book this nice hotel anyway. I booked this hotel called the Botanico, which is in Tenerife, Puerto de la Cruz. And it was a five star hotel. And it turned out to be in the book, uh, Leading Small Hotels of the World, which I didn't realise at the time. I didn't realise what a posh hotel entailed, really. Uh, this sort of must get dressed before you go to poolside coffee shop and things like that. And uh, anyway, we, we were on this coach going towards the hotel. You know, they keep dropping off and some they were like dropping off at back at hotel and some at front of hotels and everything. And it was a bit of a shock to us because I didn't realise how dry and barren it was going to look when we landed in Tenerife. So we're on this coach. So, so far along and I'm sort of like thinking, oh God, what have I done? Anyway, <laughs> it started to gain a bit greener and greener because Puerto de la Cruz is in the north side of uh, the mountain and uh, in Tenerife and... Uh, Anyway, we're passing all these hotels and thinking, oh, God. Oh, but it's not that one who killed me. Anyway, they pulled down this road in Puerto del Cruz. There weren't that many of us still left on the uh, coach. And he turns left off this high street and all the way down was this avenue of uh, ordinary trees and palm trees and stuff full of lights and everything, little sparkling fairy lights. And then it turned in a turning space at the end and uh, two guys in full regalia, full uniform, come down this slope with a brass trolley <laughs> and got us suitcases off the uh, coach, took us and sat us and somebody came to us from reception and then went to take us in the lift. And we st sort of stood back in the lift and the guy said, oh no, madam, um, and shut the doors and as the doors shut in this brass uh beautifully shiny lift i just turned to phil and i went i brought the wrong clothes oh we spent about two days looking for some clothes that i didn't mind wearing to piano bar and brought t-shirts and short skirts and stuff anyway well as short as i dare so that's it so first holiday was tenerife and um, we've since been back there. There's very few places we've been back to more than once. And we went back later and they changed it and it had become more of a spa. And it was just not, uh, no, don't go back to the first one. Uh, I mean, first time when we looked out of the, uh, across the pools and stuff, it was just phenomenal. I, I couldn't believe it. And that was it, I was hooked. So then, since then, let me work across from on the map. In total, I've been to Florida. We went for just one week and we went to Disney and I was absolutely exhausted and I swam with dolphins and I can remember, um, I remember that very well. And for years, I couldn't remember the name of the dolphin. I could only remember uh, that the dolphin handler was called Ryan. So that used to uh, wind fill up. <laughs> um, and uh, over there, I've also I've been to Mexico. I went to Mexico when my mom died. And she left us some money, and it's and it's something Phil's always wanted to do was to go to Japan. So I wasn't that bothered. So he went. We we had no grandkids then, so he took my son to Japan uh, with his brother, who we've lost since. So I'm really glad about that. They they did the male bonding. Uh, and I said, well, where, where would you like to go, Nick? And she said, Mexico. So me and her went to Mexico. And it was absolutely fantastic. So we did a bit of sightseeing. But Phil's, uh, Nick has spent most of the time going, oh, more stones. Lovely. Because you're only young. And um, we were in a lovely hotel. And it had like its own little lagoon. And I could snorkel in that then. I love snorkeling. Uh, and we went to um, Ishkaret. Uh, and another park that I can't pronounce. No. Um, and I snorkeled all the way down the river in there. And oh, that was fantastic. Moving across, uh, in we've been to Jersey, Amsterdam, 
pro souls, Bruges, Dublin. Most of these are short trips. We've been to quite a few times to Spain. Costa del Sol I really love and it's not, I thought it was all these high rise, you know, pictures that you had back in the 70s with all these high rise flats and things. I thought that's all it was. Anyway, we went and uh, love it, love it down there. Went from there across to Gibraltar and Tangiers, is it? Uh, so that was lovely. So I've been to South Spain quite a few times. Uh, Mallorca, Menorca, Ibiza. Did Gran Canaria. However, I got off the plane from Gran Canaria and I wasn't well. Really, really feeling poorly. Couldn't even stand at the desk to check in. So by the time we checked in... The, Phil checked in and then we both went up to the room and by the time I got up to the room I had to go to bed and then I started throwing up and then I won't tell you all the ins and outs but not breathing, being sick, couldn't eat, one thing or another. Phil spent the entire week more or less sat at the side of my bed like every time I opened my eyes he would just sat on a chair like this, just like looking at me because I was so poorly. I'd sat doctor twice. Oh, I think I left the hotel room twice just because I felt sorry for him. And uh, I once went down for breakfast, couldn't manage more than his last toast. Then, And then, uh, anyway, uh, we went out for a meal once. And when I smelt somebody else like a cigarette up, because I'd had a cigarette all week, and it was like, oh, gold. Uh, so I went back to his room. Anyway, so Phil doesn't even like you talking about Gran Canaria. Don't mention it. There's no way on this earth you'd have to pay him a million to get him to go back to Gran Canaria. Uh, it was horrendous. Um, what else? Spanish. Um, Mallorca, Menorca, Ibiza, Gran Canaria, Fresh Ventura, that were nice. Uh, yeah, and then Greek ones, we've been to uh, Skiathos, that's another one. Skiathos we went in the September because it's our anniversary on the 23rd of September. So, um, we went for 10 days in a hotel called the Skiathos Palace, I think it was. <laughs> well, in name only, because it was absolutely vile. Now, this was only the second holiday we'd been on. So after we'd been to the Tenerife one and then we went to this one, we got in the room and I actually cried because at the time we were having to really save up to go on holiday. And uh, it was all melamine and roofs that had been leaking, so carpets were horrible. Nobody got in the pool for the entire week because it, it was never moving and there was, it looked like a skin on it. It was horrible. Food was vile. Um, yeah, horrible, horrible hotel. However, I loved being in Skiathos. The people were great. Skiathos, old town's fantastic. Um just sat outside at water uh, in walked down through old town and um, one bus that went through and there used to be a, a guy with one leg <laughs> used to be a guy with one leg that worked on a uh, local beach and uh, he used to come and bring you uh, a bed out he used to kind of be on his crutches we i don't know how i did it so bring you some bed out in his tiny uh, beach and uh, I think it was brother or somebody uh, and they both had the same odour let's say uh, and he used to drive the bus and he used to get on uh, one end of the bus and then because there were doors in the middle as well and he used to push you on <laughs> he'd get off come round and put his hands on um, railings and like push you onto the bus <laughs> and then go back round and get on again because um, there was that, just that one bus through, but it, I think it was about one euro or something to get down into Skiathos, so that was fantastic. However, three or four days into that one, I started being abscessed in my tooth and ended up on antibiotics and the, the dentist. And I tell you, the dentists over there were absolutely fantastic. It was it was a brilliant dentist. So, despite being poorly and couldn't have a drink and I couldn't really eat much for about a week, uh, I enjoyed that one. Oh, we had torrential rain as well. 
and there was enough rain coming down because uh, it's all like pine trees and stuff it is lovely if you can go go um so the rain had been pouring down um the hillside and actually we we could see it coming out of the front of the um doors of the hotels down the steps and stuff and they were like uh, bread uh, boxes you know like crates and stuff floating down road there were that much rain uh, and of course I worked very well with this uh, abscess in my mouth so after taking antibiotics and painkillers my stomach started playing up this is what it's like living with me and um, I said Phil you've got to get me something for my stomach I was curled up like a fetus in bed anyway. He went off to get me some Gaviscon substitute or something. And when, while he were out, that's when these heavens opened. <laughs> he opened the hotel door and he stood there like a drowned rat, white, wet through right to his pants and lot. So, yeah, usually eventful. Uh, so what did I say? Crete, Skiathos, uh, Rhodes... Um, not Heraki. We've been to Heraki, but what's the one in Greece that's off the mainland and there's like three? Alkadiki. Been to Alkadiki. Um, been to Turkey twice. Um, and then the furthest away we've been, just to cut it a little bit shorter, the furthest away we've been is Borneo. Uh, well, he went to Japan, but we went to Borneo together. For our silver wedding, so that would have been 2003, and uh, stayed in a hotel in Borneo. Phil went diving. Um, beautiful. What did they call it? Rosaria. Oh, fantastic people. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful people. Lovely. Uh, we went to we stayed somewhere called Kotakina Blue, and um, what what I found amazing is that there wasn't that much tourism then back in two thousand three. So they found it quite surprising seeing blonde curly because in the sun it goes quite blonde, curly haired and everything. And um, in the hotel they kept trying to get me to sing because this was quite a posh hotel. They kept coming around at night when they're doing things and asking if I kindly sing. And then Phil realised after somebody said they thought I look like Celine Dion. That's a chance to be a fine thing if I could sing like her. Anyway, yeah, that was lovely. Uh, Rosaria in um, Borneo and at the back of it is a forest with uh, orangutans in. Uh, yeah, so Borneo. Gosh, that was a long one, wasn't it? I might cut bits out of this. It might be a bit choppy. Uh, so I've done much travelling. Number five. Have you had many jobs before this? So I'll start from the beginning. Go fetch a cup of tea. Getting on a bit now, you know. Uh, I'll run through it quick. First job from leaving school, record shop. We had Betamax. That's how long ago it was. And uh, we had all these racks built up with Betamax on and it drove the boss crackers so he got rid and went to cassettes. So LPs used to sell record players, uh, sharps was the in thing at the time. Um, yeah, were it Grundig? Mm. Uh, record players, records, which was good because Phil was massively into music. He used to spend a lot of time listening to uh, Genesis, Emerson, Lake and Palmer, uh, PFM, uh, that's Premiata, Fonoria, Marconi. Oh, Premiata, Fonoria, Marconi. Mm. Uh, PFM and uh, Snow Goose and uh, oh, Steel Aspan, we used to like. And then on the other end of the scale, I've got David Essex, David Cassidy, old stuff, uh, Michael Jackson, uh, Jackson 5, um, yeah. So, uh, that took a long time, didn't it, for the first job. I'll just run through it next quick. Uh, I've also wo worked at um, Coal Brothers, which is a John Lewis. Now called John Lewis, we will always know it's Coal Brothers in Sheffield. 
and then I went off to have the babies and then I went to work part time, I went to work for Macro, then I worked for Duns which was an Irish uh, based department store in town, then Meadow Hall opened so I went to work at Meadow Hall and I was in CNA, worked on clothing, worked on kids clothing, uh, worked in customer services, ended up as uh, what you call a, um, well, a cashier. So I used to do a lot of cashiering, I used to do cashiering in macro. Incidentally, if you were 20 pence down in macro, you had to balance it and we would be taking about £37,000 in the day just on our till. So, uh, yeah, so that was fun. And uh, there's a macro CNA. And then from there, I ended up getting a job as an estate agent. Now, that was the longest. That was over 20 years I worked as an estate agent. Started in training as a trainee, then I was a uh, negotiator, then within 18 months I was given a manager's position and then I was moved branches into bigger branches, then I became an area manager, then the stress got too much and I moved uh, companies, fine for a while, then I got pneumonia. So, because I couldn't handle a big branch, they moved me into a smaller branch, uh, which was right for my health, however it really did me head in. And uh, then it all got really, really stressful and banks started being in control instead. And uh, I had to dig fit one day and I went, not doing it. Um, panic, stricken, couldn't stand the stress any longer. Threw a paddy, chucked everything on the floor, put keys through the door and that's it. Never went back there. Anyway, after I'd recovered from my nervous breakdown, I decided to have another go at it and I went back to the original company that I'd worked for that was more of a family before the banks owned it. It was lovely. So I went back there thinking it would be okay, but it wasn't. And I started having heart palpitations and um, this thing where it starts to pound out my chest. I mean, you'd, you'd be able to see it from across the room and everything. And they said, avoid stress and sleep whenever you can. And my fibro was bad and stuff, so I didn't bother with that. God, I sound like such an ailing... I don't know how I get out of Um, You just carry on, don't you? Just keep going. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I had to pack that in. Anyway, in the meanwhile, to try and get out of... Uh, estate agency i started turning my hobby which was cakes and sugar craft in and making just cakes for kids into a full-time business so i did wedding cakes i had a website used to go to shows and um I, with the decorations uh it was getting they were too heavy for me i couldn't pick them up they weigh a ton when they've got tons of chocolate and cream and icing on uh, and my daughter said, why don't you sell some of the decorations and let other people make their own cakes? So I started with that. So I did a couple of years selling the decorations. So I built my own store and I used to make them to order. Send out within two or three days. People would be making their own wedding cakes, birthday cakes, novelty cakes, cupcakes, whatever with them. And it got to the point where it was actually going so well. I was working till about 11 or 12 o'clock at night. Uh, and I was having to work every day because I didn't want to let anybody down. And while I was doing it, because there was endless hours, just that sort of thing, I started watching Nick and uh, Ben Fitzpatrick, uh, Caroline, Carla, came a bit later, I think. Um, anyway, it started with looking up postage options for this uh, sugar craft and that's when I came across Nick's and then after doing carrying on doing this for about a year and then watching what people were selling them for I thought hang on a minute I'm having to make this lot why don't I just buy some stuff in so I started with some stuff from around the house clothes out the wardrobe old handbags shoes boots scarves you name it wherever i could find ornaments i didn't want things like that and then i started buying from charity shops then i started doing car boots and when that picked up i then got rid of the sugar shop i went full time on this and i don't make as much as i did with the sugar but part of that is aging process i think and uh, having to tech every day as it comes uh, and part of it is because I've just not got the same drive I had when I was 35 as long as I've got enough money coming in if I need a rest I have a rest so yeah so that's how I get started 
Um, right. Do I listen to music and what do I like best? I used to listen to music a lot. I don't listen to it as much now. When I worked in the other room a lot, I used to have music on quite a bit. Um, but I tended to just have the radio on. Um, now we've got Alexa. If I tell Alexa to uh, play anything, it's probably female singers like Whitney Houston. Um, or who do I like? Who do I tell it to play? Uh, Whitney Houston, quite varied this. Uh, Whitney Houston, um, Joe Cocker, um, John Martin, um, Yusundo, I like, who I can't understand the word, he's from Senegal, I think. I can't understand the word he's saying, but I like that it's a bit like an African Cuban rhythms. He did uh, Seven Seconds with Nina Cherry. Um, and I just love the tone of his voice and, and the, the beat. So I like that when I'm working. Um, 60s, 50s, 60s music. Um, who else did I put down? Oh, yeah. My old favourite, my old crooner, Dean Martin. Oh, my first crush. <laughs> Dean Martin, bless him. Love them. Um... Number seven, what are your favourite TV shows, series or films and any recommendations? Recommendations came, uh, this one came from Kelly. I would never have thought of watching it. It's about a young lass who plays chess and I'm not going to say any more than that, but it's called The Queen's Gambit and it was brilliant. Loved it. Loved that one, but that one come off Kelly. Um, Recently, since me and Phil have been split up, I've managed to watch two whole series of Battlestar Galactica. So I've finished all four series now and it, it right got into, I got right into characters in that one. So Battlestar Galactica I enjoyed. Which else have I enjoyed? Over the last year or two, I've enjoyed Stranger Things, Game of Thrones, although I think the, the ending that we waited so long for was rubbish. I think he should have, because it's in the family, I think he should have been attacked by her and uh, the dragon set onto it and then it turned out he were fireproof as well. <laughs> Something different anyway, because it was rubbish. Uh, but I did enjoy the series. And Vera, I really like Vera, the, them sort of police things, but I liked her character. She used to make me laugh. Um... Yeah, strange things. Uh, films wise, uh, favourite of all time is the original Oliver, which will have been late 40s, black and white, uh, original Oliver. Um, more modern, tell you what makes me laugh, Ragnarok. I like all Avengers type stuff. I like um, any sci-fi stuff that's not horror. I don't like horror. I don't like being frightened. I don't get it. Don't get why you'd want to be frightened. Um, but I thought Ragnarok were really funny. And I like... Um, what other films? Uh, Independence Day. Uh, iRobot. Anything with Will in it, really, to be honest. Um, yeah, so they're my favourite films. Eight. Um, outside of reselling, what are your favourite hobbies? Don't think I've got any. Turned hobbies into a job, like with the baking and the, the cakes and stuff like that. But I don't think I have hobbies. I think I have obsessions. And because I want to get my reselling done, I can't allow myself to have another obsession. Obsessions in the past. And I'm talking like I'd spend 24-7 doing it if I could. And I've done that for years uh, at a time. One years ago, when we had the massive computer just in the corner of the um, bedroom, was I got a Mavis Beacon teacher's typing. And I always wanted to be able to touch type. And you're just like following her, copying her, a big brown 
fox jumped over the lazy dog or whatever it is and you just keep to, and it's like a speed typing thing so now i can't type anything unless i've sat with both hands on the keyboard because my fingers know where they are but my, my head don't i can't look if i've got one finger typing like that it'd take me forever so i have to use two hands so that was an obsession uh what else obsessions have i had oh yeah the sugar craft obviously so i watched online tutorials i mean now youtube just fantastic who's to pay for online tutorials uh paul bradshaw is brilliant if you want to start learning and um books see me sugar craft books and just practicing so yeah i get absolutely hooked on that uh, and another obsession has been learning spanish which is I, i'm still not fluent i'm still uh it still only gets by on holiday i've been able to tell the uh, maintenance guy that the shower's not working and can you come and help me please and where's the nearest bank and uh they've made a mistake with my change which is a good one to learn um and all sorts but i've got courses on that but i wanted to learn to read it and write it as well so used to uh get print out print them all off and um sit watching telly and do these uh tests spanish tests so i could read it and write it as well uh which is coming dead handy sometimes um but yeah I wanted to go for classes for Spanish, but realised that I couldn't go to the beginners one because I would have been bored senseless learning days of the week and numbers and, you know, colours and stuff again. Um, but I didn't know enough to go straight into GCSE course, so I didn't bother. I do that. I learn enough to bugger it up for doing something else. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Pero necesito estudiar mucho más para hablar con la gente de ella. And if there's anybody Spanish watching, you can tell me whether that makes any sense whatsoever. <laughs> um, what was that? Eight, nine. I need to find number nine. Because they're all scattered about from when. Uh, what got me into reselling? Uh, exactly that. Um that I said before that I was watching other people do it and I thought I can have a go at that and it saves me having to make it so I did it and then swapped over from there um if you had to stop reselling what other job would you do um but you must be self-employed and work from home I think I'd have to make it the YouTube because if the thing that would stop me reselling would be if I can't physically do it anymore, I think. Um, or if I, get, I kind of burn myself out and that obsession's done. It could be that it is just an obsession and it'll be done at somewhere. And switch will go off as quick as it came on. Um, but if it's physically because I can't do that anymore, I might see if I could do uh, YouTube videos on making cake decorations and stuff because I'd be able to do a few at a time and film it and be more passive income. I mean, I've still got all the equipment here. The baking wise, that's a bit difficult because it, you know, anything you do is hard work, isn't it? Um, but actually showing people how to make um, with moulds and cutters and uh, make it rolling the edges and all that lot. Yeah. I'll probably start doing YouTube videos on the uh, cake decorating. Um, what number was that? What would you like? Um, oh no. Nikki said, uh, is there any treasures or jewellery that you've bought to resell that you can't part with? Not really. Um, Jewelry wise, I've got I've got some bits of jewelry like like this. You see, it's not something I can't. I'd be devastated to part with. That's never happened. But um, I've got them all hanging up in there, so I just like pull an odd one out and think, oh, I'll have that or I'll have that. But if if I'd have listed them and they'd sold, I'd be happy with that. There's a couple of items of clothing. I tend to do it more with clothing. Um, 
I bought the I bought these to resell. Uh, this is a padded, super warm, jewels jacket, which I've kept. However, we're now at the point where I can. Well, if I hold it in, I can fasten the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> but that's super warm, so I'll get that one. Uh, and then this one. Um, oh, it's a couple of years ago. If anybody met me at Hitchin, um, I had this one on, although probably nobody will remember what anybody were wearing. Um, but I had this. Let's see if this still fits. Yeah. So... I like these um, smart oxy wool jacket. Yeah, um, I just thought colour suited me, and uh, I feel nice in it. So yeah, it tends to be bits of clothing that I've kept really, um, rather than anything else. And uh, oh, it's like a cup of tea. Um, What would you like to be doing in five years? I've got to be honest, and I don't want to sound dramatic, but the only thing for me is breathing. That would be good. As long as I'm still breathing, we make the best of everything and uh, have some fun along the way. Um, I'm not very good at planning because you don't know what what's going to come up, but as long as I'm still here and... Uh, Everybody I love still here, then uh, I can't go wrong, really. So, hopefully we'll still be chatting. Sorry if that was a bit long-winded. Uh, I've got absolutely no idea how long I've been going. This is probably about an hour long. So, uh, I can understand if you keep skipping forward. But I uh, just had to come back on and onto this one. I realised that Joan... <laughs> Joe Morris had asked this, uh, uh, she come back again and asked this question. She said, because you weren't on the uh, mast reseller, she says, I've got to ask you this. If you were on a desert island and there were just you and Carla, how long would it be before I enter? <laughs> I said, trust you. Short answer, it's not happening. Unless we've been... Uh, thrown on this desert island and there's also a primer stove and a nice frying pan it's not gonna happen i have my bacon like cardboard uh, i have my steak like shoe leather um no anyway i'll probably be dead a long time before carla <laughs> because uh, i've just not got youth on my side <laughs> so she's quite welcome to it although she think it's a bit grisly Thank you everybody for your questions. I hope it's given you a little bit of insight and uh, thank you for watching as always and I love you loads. Take care. Bye.